Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to Losers Round 2 cast for the Akron 2013 Christmas Tournament. Despite the fact that we are in late January of 2014, tournaments take a while sometimes. I'm Shadow Free 33 and it's going to be the first two series for today. First one is going to be Aragon vs. Vermind, and second one is going to be Shaka vs. J-Raccoon. So we're going to start with Aragon vs. Vermind on Tomb of Heroes. So Tomb of Heroes is a map that we have seen many, many times before. We have Vermont on the west side of the map playing Vekir, and Aragon is on the east side of the map, either CISO or Grekum. He's playing Grekum, so he's gone back to his normal Grekum. He was playing CISO a bit earlier, but he is now playing Grekum. Either that or he was playing CISO later. Frankly, I'm not always sure about the flow of time when it comes to this game. This These are kind of older replays because the losers round matches were played quite some time ago. But... Anyway, so saying Tomb of Heroes, we've seen this map before, it has a lot of stuff on high plains, a lot of stuff in high places, actually a lot of expansions to the south that are spread out, the expansions in the north that are much more clumped together, along with ways of seeing what's going on. Now, Cybernetic Pony isn't playing, so I don't expect that these comm hubs will be destroyed too quickly, but I wouldn't be surprised if Vermind went and did that as well. I know Cybernetic Pony loves to do that. I think other players like to do that too. Anyway, Vermind is... Not here is Zaragond. Aragont is... Let's say he's setting up a very quick... A couple of Octos, possibly... Okay, Aragont... I'm not sure if he liked to do this now, but he did for a while like to do a couple Octos and Octopod and attack with that. It looks like he's going more for an economic build right now, so I doubt he's probably going to go for anything too aggressive. He is scouting out with one Octo, but that's perfectly normal. And Vermind, on the other hand, is building up more RPs, but once again, scouting... Neither player is really showing their hand at this point. Though it looks like Vermide is starting to get QPRPs pretty early. He has a Zion Beer right in position to do that. Which likely signals early vehicles. I expect a depot at the 3 minute mark or so if that's the case. And yes, he is going for Q Plasma. And Aragon will see what's happening. He is paying attention at this point in time. He does... No, he's not. He's not paying attention to when that resource processor came up. So Aragon... Looks like he's not aware that Vermine is planning on going for slightly er earlier vehicles, but he probably will be once he double checks his Octo. Now back at his base, he's not actually building anything yet. He is merely setting up his economy. He's getting himself up, set up a bit earlier before the present, while attacking nearer to the future, which is a little bit reversed from the normal advice, but... In this case, early in the game, it really doesn't matter when you do things, because whatever you do is probably going to get undone other than early economy construction. So, like I said, Vermine going for very quick Q-Plasma. I expect a vehicle, I expect a depot up within the next minute or so. I said three minute mark, maybe three and a half to four minute mark at the latest, although three and a half is not abnormally early. While Aragon, on the other hand, he is getting up Octos, he is getting up very early Q-Plasma. I expect he's going to have Octopods up pretty much right away. He's probably expecting vehicles early on from Vermine, and while a depot has not been built yet, it wouldn't be an unsafe assumption. In fact, I'm a little surprised that a depot has not been erected at this point. The, not even a foundation for the depot. That's, that is very surprising. Why Vermin has not done that is not clear at this point. Now, Aragon, on the other hand, he does have his Q Plasma RPs. A little bit of up from the present. He doesn't have any Octopods yet, but I imagine some will be forthcoming. Although he might just be going, he, getting an early Seppi, he might just be going for an early Reef and then from there going for early Faro, but I would expect early Octopods because no, he's going for an early Reef. So yeah, early Reef and then possibly advanced structures for Faro. Yeah, there's the Faro, so advanced structures to Arian. And so Aragon looks like he's going for very early air. He doesn't want to bother with Octopods. Just going for air, probably thinking he's going to be able to deal with Zion Pulses that way. And there is that Depot. Vermine looks like he started it around the 330 mark. It'll be done around the 430 mark. And then Zion Pulse will be up around the same time. If he drops in the Zion Veer to turn into a Zion Pulsar, if not, then it'll be another, I think, 30 seconds after that. So, we'll see that when it comes up. Vermine is jumping back about a minute down from when he was before. His scouting forces have not quite reached Aragon's base yet. He doesn't know about the Q Plasma. If he sees that, he'll probably figure out pretty quickly what's going on. He might suspect that it's not Arian. He might suspect that it's Octopods instead. But if he sees that Reef, which he will, he is seeing the Reef. He knows what's going on. Vermine is fully aware that Arian is being built up, and this is the thing. The depot here can easily build Teth Pulsars. 
and Test of Heroes can be easily built from the Annex, so air units coming in is perfectly counterable. There's nothing that stops Vermine from dealing with this. So Aragon, on the other hand, is continuing to go along with this. He is getting as far out... Oh, shoot, I wanted to see that because I think he was building up an Octopod. Nope, building up more Octos. He is not actually... He's just going to defend against these guys. Against the Tethvir and Zionvir, he is not... Or sorry, Tethvir and Shinvir, not yet building his Spire, but I'm sure he will fairly soon. And Vermind, his depot is done. He does not have any vehicles being constructed in it yet. And he may be building an aerial control center before he starts to build vehicles from the depot, which would mean that he can get air units of his own. Which would be effective against Pharopods. I I'm expecting he's expecting that Aragon's going to go for Pharopods, because against Zion Pulsars, you'd want to go for Pharopods. Pharopods just tear them to shreds. Sepipods also do fine, but they don't kill him as quickly. However... I think Sephipods would actually be the safer option, just because in case your opponent does decide to go for air because they're thinking you're going to go for Pharopods, if you have Sephipods, well, then there's actually an air battle, and it's not just a matter of your Pharopods die to their Teth Churchers in this case. We'll see what happens, though. I'm expecting Aragon will go for Pharopods. I'm expecting he's not going to be thinking about the... He's probably just going to think, well, Zion Pulsers, that's what's going to happen. Zion Pulsers is exactly what's going to happen, and it looks like... Zion Pulsar is actually exactly what's going to happen. So, apparently, I am thinking way too far ahead of the players, but then again, I am observing everything, and I'm seeing everything. I'm seeing all the information I have. I know everything that's going on. The players shouldn't. I assume they don't. This is a tournament match. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they are not cheating. If any of the players are cheating, I would, I would be very appreciative if you would tell me that you are cheating. Especially, ask for permission in advance if you want to cheat. I mean, I'll say no, but I'll appreciate that you asked. And then I'll be extremely suspicious of you. I'm really not providing any incentive, am I? But I'm assuming that regardless of incentive, these players were not cheating. So Vermind is just thinking about the standard opening for Vekir, which is to go for the Zion Pulsers, which, like I said, is countered by Pharopods. Pretty heavily by Pharopods, it might add. The Pharopods can cloak, which is great, because Shinbeer... Foundations are cloaked attacks, so attacking the base directly is bad. But if the Zion Pulses attack, they just skip in. The Fire Pods will finish them off no problem. And... Sepi Pods, on the other hand, not quite so invulnerable. Against Zion Pulses, they're fine, but once the Zion Pulses are destroyed and the Zion Veer pop out, the Zion Veer can actually pose a threat to the air unit, so you gotta be careful about that. There's one thing to think about. But Zion Pulses are here! At the 427 mark, Zion Pulses have been constructed. We are at the edge of the unplayable pass, by the way, so the players cannot really do much from here other than what they are currently doing. No easy room for changes. Zion Pulsar getting skip teleport. It will be teleporting into Aragon's base fairly soon. Now, Aragon, on the other hand, getting advanced structures at the 443 mark very early. But as we've seen so far, he is powering towards this. This has been his entire game plan so far. And, in fact, I would almost say that he was a little bit late in doing that. He should have done that about a minute ago. Because he's going to be able to build up this spire. He's going to be able to get himself... Well, he's getting a dome, which is a good idea. But he's going to get a spire at some point. Or he should get a spire at some point if he wants to go through this. Because that's I, what I imagine he was going for. And there it is. The spire is at the 530 mark. The Zion pulses are already in place. One of them already has skipped teleport at this point. Vermind is slightly ahead. And... This Zion Pulsar has Skip Teleport, this Zion Pulsar is about to get Skip Teleport, and this last Zion Pulsar does not have it. It is apparently just driving towards the center of the map, just to double check that nothing fishy is going on. Just to keep Aragon somewhat honest, although admittedly Aragon is not actually going out for any cheesy builds. He hasn't done anything like that. He is simply powering for air and powering for domes. He is countering the expected Zion Pulsar attack, and he is doing it right. Or at least, he is doing a counter. We don't... I don't see any... Pharopods, though. He is going purely for Octos. Looks like possibly more domes. I think two domes is enough. Two domes is definitely going to be able to handle the Zion Pulsar skipping in, because the key target is going to be here. The Zion Pulsars are going to be hanging around here, and these domes will take them out. Perfect thing to do. However, what Vermind does next is going to be very important. Getting an aerial control center, so he's probably going to get Teth Churchers after this point. And then... Getting nicely done, putting a comm hub in place. This is what I like to see, because comm hubs and comm centers are some of my favorite things to build. Especially when I was playing Vekir, because comm hub with Zion Pulsar is extremely powerful. You don't have to worry about being near things like domes. You just go off in the corner and blow everything up from the distance, because you can spot it out. However, you'll have to hover it in, probably around next to this little obelisk. 
I don't think Aragon can see this, though. It looks like... No, Aragon cannot see this. He's not aware of this at all. Vermont, on the other hand, has skipped in from the bottom, and there is a dome in place to deal with his Iron Pulsers. It's going down, and the main threat is going to be for the Zion Pulses is if they end up skipping over here, which it looks like they aren't. It looks like they... Vermind has not... Actually, he's kind of being risky by doing this right next to the playable pass edge. If he jumps into the center right here, those Zion Pulsers are dead. So, he is being quite smart in where he's positioning himself. I guess he's assuming correctly that Aragon has set up defenses near the economy, because that's what you do. And nicely done, setting up a couple foundations at the center of the map, so Vermind has nice center map healing. He doesn't have to worry about getting everything back to base to get to the depot to heal up in there. He has foundations just to heal them up right in the center, keeping travel times low. And this comm hub is up, but is not being moved into a better position. He can spot out one of the domes, very important information, but he can't spot out the rest of the base. If he moves it up to about here, this comm hub will be able to spot pretty much everything in the base. From here, or possibly here, though I think from here the Arcticus will be able to see it. The Aragon's point of view. You actually... It doesn't really matter. Buildings can see above terrain. Buildings are not terrain limited, so... The comm hub would be visible, but at the same time, everything else would be visible for Vermind. But Aragon has his fire pods. The fire pod is up. Sepi pods are following, and Vermind, on the other hand... Don't check his point of view. He is about 20 seconds down from there, but lacks air units. He only has Zion Pulsers. He has put the Zion Pulsers into position to attack the Arcticus. It will go down quickly, but at this point, Aragon's not using it, so it's... It is purely acting as a tank. It is not acting as a hierarchy leader, which is, of course, its main purpose. Well, its design purpose. The intended purpose is a hierarchy leader. Its main purpose is usually a tank. And there comes the Pharopod, and this is where the Zion Pulsers really fall apart. I'm sure Vermine is probably scrambling at this point to set up air units, but he was already half-prepared. He'd be scrambling. He's not scrambling. He has a Shin Turcher, but what I mean by scram air units in this case is Teth Turcher. Because Shin Turcher can detect the fire pods, that's very good. But the Teth Turcher is necessary to actually kill it in a timely fashion. The Shin Turcher can do so, it's just that once the Sepi Pod comes up and helps out, the Sepi Pod and Fire Pod would win against the Shin Turcher without too much issue. So, the Shin Turcher, good to have. Lack of Teth Turchers, however, may be problematic for Vermind. And Vermind has the resources, he's low on Chrono Energy, however, he should get more of that. Well, okay, he can't just get more of that, it's just. That's why I always say to macro in the present and micro near the past, so that you actually aren't burning a bunch of chrono energy setting up your build orders. You're using most of your chrono energy setting up the last bit of attack that you need, so you have just a bit more than your opponent, and thus are able to do that last change, and from there, win a battle. Because your opponent simply can't do anything to get away from you winning that battle. However, the Sepi Pod is not here to support. It looks like Aragon... We'll check from his point of view, though, because the Sepi Pod has actually moved in from his point of view and is able to get rid of the Shin Turcher, drop it under Shin Beer, and the Fire Pod goes back to heal up. So Aragon ultimately defends against this attack. He gets the last word on that one, and it is a perfect defense. But two Teth Searchers are coming in at the same time at the Unplayable Past Edge for Vermind. He did build a couple of these before jumping away from there. Now, this Teth Searcher, that is the bigger problem for the Sepi Pod, as you can see. No problem at all for the Teth Turcher to get rid of a Sepi Pod. Bit bigger problem for it to get rid of Fire Pod, but even then it's more a question of not dying to the Fire Pod. If other units are in the way distracting the Fire Pod, then the Teth Searcher does fine. Because Teth Searchers are the best for cost air or anti air ground unit that Vrek Gear has. And here come the Teth Searchers. So the Teth Searchers are in place, or at least are the center of the map. Vermind, from his point of view, he is hierarchying them up, getting another Shin Searcher for detection, and. That's it so far. He's not building any more units at the moment. He is, however, moving in the Teth Churcher and getting a foundation for extra healing. And here comes Aragon's second big thing to do, which is Octoligos. Aragon loves these Octoligos, and this is a bit of a threat. This is going to be kind of... Well, this is going to be interesting. It's going to be tricky, because Vermind has some forces to deal with the Octoligos, but not a whole lot, and this is on the Octoligos territory. Now, Aragon does not have Chrono Boarding. That is one thing that sort of works in Vermine's favor at this point, but he does have Reefs. He does have Octoligos. The Octoligos are wonderful anti-ground and anti-air forces. Their only weakness is a lack of Splash, and as you can see, Vermine doesn't exactly have a whole lot of units, so lacking Splash is not going to be that detrimental. This Zion Pulse will last about two hits, and then not even get the Octoligo down to three quarters health before dying, and that Zion Beer has no chance of getting close. And remember, this is with the Foundation support. Octoligos are scary when you're playing Vekir. They are extremely scary 
And in case you're wondering, they deal exactly as much damage, or almost exactly as much damage, no, exactly as much damage as air as to ground, 22.6 damage per second to air and ground. They're extremely scary artillery units. Anti-air and anti-ground artillery. And as you can see, Vermines decided wisely to retreat from these Octoligos. His best option at this point is just to get more units to deal with them. Just to overwhelm them with units. And it looks like that's what he's doing. He's producing more and more Shin Turchers. It doesn't really matter if they're on the ground or on the air, like I said. The only difference from air is the fact that they move faster. So they can get in before they die. They can get more shots in before they die. That's the only difference when fighting Octoligos. That's it. They are that scary. You can't just use air to counter them. They will kill air. They will kill ground. They will kill everything. They can simply not kill large groups of things very quickly. They can kill them one at a time. When you have three Octoligos like this, it's still pretty scary. So do not underestimate the Octoligo. And Vermind continuing to produce more and more forces. He's about half a minute up from Aragon. Aragon not moving into attack. No, he is moving into attack. What am I saying? He is moving into attack. He is going to try to punish Vermind, push him further and further back into his base. Getting distracted by a Tethvir, which probably wasn't Vermind's intention. But Vermine losing a Tethvir and getting more Octoligos after this. Is, well, sorry, this is the Octoligo he had before. He could get more Octoligos from this point. He might be just investing in Chronoporeans. He might be getting more and more Liquid Crystal to do that. He does have a fourth Octoligo. It is going actually straight for Vermine's base. While well, the other three Octoligos are actually taking quite a bit of damage from the Shin Turchers. They're still going to not have that hard of a time dealing with this. I mean, with the second pot support, this Octoligo will probably go down, but more Shin Turchers as well. It, Hold on a sec. Okay, Vermine. No, Vermine has actually managed to get... Hold on, he did... he just managed to get rid of the Octoligos? Okay, he managed to get rid of the Octoligos with two Shin Turchers. I guess that meant more from his point of view. He was further back, a little bit hard to tell from there. But Aragon, a little bit further back than him at this point. 13.30 mark. The Octoligo is reaching Vermine's base to attack it. And Vermine, on the other hand, he's got his three Shin Turchers. He has a foundation as well for extra healing in case... So another little fire base he can operate from, essentially. But the Octoligo coming in here and starting to take out this aerial control center. Only about five more hits before it goes down. Teth Turcher, sorry, Teth Pulsar and Shin Turcher coming out. And that Shin Turcher is on its own, not going to be able to deal with the Octoligo too easily. The other Shin Turchers are on their way back to deal with it. And they should be able to all together deal with it, probably with a loss of one Shin Turcher. We'll see, the Octoligo is... About half health at this point, and no, it's not actually able to kill any of the Shin Turchers at this point. It looks like four Shin Turchers are enough to kill one Octoligo, but that's still pretty scary. And come, here come the Farpods and Sepi, well, Farpod and Sepi Pod. Aragon does not have a whole lot of units, however, in place. Like I said, he probably was trying to get Chronoporting for the Octoligos, just to have them Chronoport and assist themselves that way. But it looks like that's not going to happen. Enough Shin Turchers, even the Sepi Pod cannot deal with them. Obviously, some Shin Turchers will die in the process, but still enough Shin Turchers that the Sepi Pod cannot kill them all. We'll only be able to kill one of them before going down itself, and there that Shin Turcher goes. So, two Shin Turchers drop down to Shin Beer in order to get rid of Fire Pod and Sepi Pod. Not a great trade, but it does work. And it looks like, ultimately, the base has been saved. Foundation being built up to heal up this aerial control center just to get it into shape. No more buildings, no more vehicles coming up from the depot. No more buildings coming up either, actually. Foundation here will pro may possibly be useful. Looks like, though, one big mistake Aragon made here is that he didn't expand while attacking. He should have, while he was attacking, it looks like he was trying to move some of his RPs into the south, but he should have actually been building Octos, sending them over to the south, and then using them to build RPs while he was attacking. That would have given him chronoporting that much sooner. It would have given him, therefore, stronger Octoligos, allow him to build more and more units, and it looks like Vermine's actually taking advantage of the fact that he took advantage of expanding while being attacked. Very risky move, well, not very risky move in this case, because the south side of the map, the attack was over to the north, but still, that was a wise move on his part, keeping his economy going, and able to get Gatek now. He has Gatek, all of his units can now skip teleport, he can get Slipgates if he wants to, and really just a matter of time, just a matter of when he wants to attack, and Aragon, on the other hand, Getting his RPs hit because, like I said, he did not expand when he had the chance and take advantage of that and get the resources he needs. So I think Vermind has this at this point. So we'll see, though. Vermind is not in a great position. He does have Shin Turtles fighting Sepi Pods, and that is never wise. Now, Shin Beers against Sepi Pods, that's okay, but not great. Shin Beers do not have a high damage output. They, yeah, they pretty much don't work. 
They work slightly better than Shin Churches, but only because they're on the ground, and Seti Buzz are slightly better against air than ground. However. No, however. There is no however. There are no Test Churches coming in. Just Shin Churches. More Shin Churches are being produced. Burmind is clearly much more afraid of the Octoligos than he is the Seti Pods, which would appear to be a mistake because the Octoligo coming in here to finish off the Shin Turcher is not going to be helping out too much. Now, of course, Burmind still has more of the map at this point. The Octoligo can kind of press forward and deal with RPs kind of one at a time, but really, Burmind has a stronger economy. He has more units. Getting Zion Turchers, which is not a great idea given the amount of Sepipod support the Octoligo has. I can see why he's doing it, because he wants to get the Octoligo without the Octoligo di getting him back. But Sepipods can detect. Like they, they are the detector for Grekum, or at least the aerial detector for Grekum. So, not a good idea there. Not a bad idea. I can see where the logic is. It's just that the Sepipods are too big of a threat. Now, if the Sepipods are gone, then the Octoligo is completely vulnerable, and this design torture is a great idea. But... Otherwise, it doesn't work out too well. And it looks like Vermine has jumped back slightly. He is not clearly sure what to do with the Shin Turcher, which is a little bit unfortunate because that Shin Turcher needs to be used wisely. He has been throwing away a lot of his units, and as Vekir, that's a bad idea. Even with an economic advantage, you don't want to throw away units as Vekir. It takes a while to get new units, and new units are expensive. Best option with Vekir is to make sure your units do not die. Letting your units die is a great way to lose the game. And right now, Vermind, it's his game to lose. I mean, at this point, Vermind is actually doing quite well. He just needs to put in that killing blow. Because Aragon at this point only has one active liquid crystal RP, or two active liquid crystal RPs, and three active Q plasma RPs. That's not great. At the 18 minute mark in the game, Aragon is stalling on economy, while Vermind. Vermind has. Well, let's see. Looks like about. 7 LCRPs and 8. Well, it looks like about 4 QPRPs, which isn't great. Sorry, 10 LCRPs, that is good. So, Vermine is doing fine for economy. Granted, with Chronoport, or Gate Tech rather, he doesn't have a Slipkit yet, so it's not going to be a big deal that he doesn't have a, lot, a whole lot of Q Plasma at this point, but he could use it. If he had more Q Plasma, he'd get a Slipgate. He could send back units, though admittedly, once again, Shin Churches is not the best choice. Test Churches, however, are a good choice, and Zion Churches are also a good choice without Sepipod support. Aragon is about half a minute down from here. He has not actually moved back any forces to... No, he has moved back the far apart to deal with that Zion Churcher, and de deal with it it did, because the Arcticus is also a detector, as should be pointed out. Ver so, Vermont, from his point of view, the Arcticus was there, he was hitting it, but... It is a detector, and Aragon took it full advantage of that to make sure that that Zion Turcher simply could not live. So Aragon is doing a good job defending, but really it's just a matter of Vermine isn't hitting the best way he could. Because I'm not surprised, those Octoligos are scary. It's hard to counter them as Vekir. It's not impossible, but it is a difficult thing to do. Now, given that it's... It's still something that Vermine needs to be worried about. He is getting more... Okay, a lot of Zion Turchers here. Not a bad idea. He could use... I think, in this case, Zion Turcher, Teth Turcher would be almost a better idea, just because with that, he could get rid of the Sepipods of the Teth Turchers and get rid of the Octoligos. Although, admittedly, Aragon has not built a whole lot more Octoligos. In fact, Aragon has pretty much ceased Octoligo production at this point. He was focusing on getting his Chronoporting. So, he's... This is actually pretty good for him. For Vermine, that is. If he goes with... Teth Turcher, he can get rid of the Sepi Pods, and then the Zion Turchers get rid of the Octoligos, alongside the Shin Turchers if he wants to. This could actually work pretty well. I think that this is going to be the final attack at this point. Vermind is pushing in five Zion Turchers in here with three Shin Turchers and one Teth Turcher. I really would have think, thought it would be a better idea to have like, two or three Teth Turchers instead of the Shin Turchers there, but apparently Vermind disagrees. We shall see how this turns out, and Aragont, on the other hand, does have chronoporting. The 21 minute mark, Aragon has chronoporting, and. Well, okay, we jumped back about 15 seconds, but he has chronoporting basically now. And because of that, he can send these units back, he can double up his forces, and as Grekum, you can actually do a lot of little shenanigans with that, which you can't easily do with other species. Although permacloning is much weaker than it used to be, it's still. Chronoporting anywhere on the map is still a powerful thing to do. So Aragon has that power, he doesn't have a whole lot of chronology with which to use it, though. And it looks like he is not really going to be taking advantage of that anytime soon. Moving the Octoligo in towards this base here. 
Vermine is still well ahead in terms of economy. He's still got a whole lot of army going in here, and he's actually attacked. Further in the future, he has attacked. Now, I didn't pay too much attention to this because Aragon has not yet responded to this, but it looks like if he doesn't respond, Aragon will lose. Now, Aragon, from his point of view, has not moved the Octoligo in position. He could Chronoport here, and he is Chronoporting back the Faropod to deal with this, and it looks like that's going to not really undermine too much of the economy. Vermine has been floating, and I know a few people in chat were noticing that Vermine was floating, but the thing is, in Akron, floating is not necessarily a bad thing, because what it allows you to do is have a bit of an economic buffer in case your opponent does exactly what Aragon just did, which is Chronoport back to destroy your resource processors three minutes earlier than you had previously lost them if they had attacked them earlier. Like, three minutes earlier, you don't have those RPs, you don't have that economy, but if you've been floating just a bit, you won't actually lose out on anything, won't cancel anything in the process. And that's what Aragon did. And, sorry, that's what Vermine did in order to respond to what Aragon was going to do. And so Vermine is actually going to be doing okay. In fact, I think this is uncountable. I think at this point, Vermine, I believe, has won this game. Now, Aragon, he is further in the past, so his point of view is slightly more authoritative. But even then, there's only one Octoligo for him, and that will go down. We already saw that four Shin Churches will get rid of an Octoligo with Design Church support as well. And remember, all of these have skipped Teleport. That Octoligo is as dead as it's seen. Once Vermine knows where it is, it is going to die. Now, of course, as Aragon is pointing out, he still has the ability to Chronoport this thing back. He still has one chance to deal some extra damage. Probably won't do too much, but he still has that one Chronoport, and he's probably going to take advantage of it. Once he gets the Octoligo in position, though, once again, Vermine has been floating to the point that it won't matter. Vermine has such a huge buffer. In fact, he's floating too much, honestly. He's He could be building a few more units, but he is floating enough that he has enough of a buffer that any of these RPs being lost even three minutes ago will not cost him the game. He's already won. In fact, I think Aragon... I'm a bit surprised he has not thrown in the towel at this point. He is moving his Octoligo into a better position to attack with, but... We'll see. This is when he's going to Chronoport, if any time. And there it goes! There's the Chronoport! Back to the 22 minute mark, and... Really to no avail. Actually, it looks like the Octoligo is, in fact... The pre chronoport Octoligo is moving back. It would appear that Vermind is actually going... No, he is... That was previous order. So, Aragon looks like he's throwing the towel, and that should be game. So, yeah, that's game. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with game two shortly, so stay tuned. Welcome back, Akron fans, to the second match of the series of Vermine versus Aragont for the Akron 2013 Christmas Tournament Losers Round 2. So just to review, the round, sorry, Losers Round 1, not 2. I just kind of got into a rhyme there and didn't quite catch myself. So yes, Losers Round 1, but this is the first series. Second match is going to be on Cataclysm Ridge. We saw Vermine to do a pretty good job against Aragon and Tomb of Heroes. Didn't quite make it decisive as quickly as he could have, but he still won ultimately. And we'll see what happens on Cataclysm Ridge, what they do there. So Cataclysm Ridge, we've also seen a great deal of. It's a very common map to see played. And it's a map that a lot of people really like. And I've always liked. It's one of the most popular maps actually in the game. Expect to see it a fair amount. And admittedly, the tournament is actually... Or rather, the... Not the tournament so much, but the maps are chosen randomly. Players can opt out of maps, but they were chosen randomly, so it's not a question of the players choosing to play on this map, though admittedly I'm sure they enjoy doing so. It's a small map, kind of rush-oriented, as you can tell. Not a whole lot... There's not a huge amount of economy, and there's certainly not a large rush distance between the bases. It's it's a pretty tiny place. Anyway, Aragon is getting himself nothing special. He is actually going for CISO very quickly, however. He's not going for Grekman this time around. And Vermind is going for Vekir as he was before, as is usual. Now, Vermind, I expect in this map, will probably go for fairly quick vehicles. He'll probably get pretty quick Q-Plasma and then get a quick Depot because of how how small this map is. He might go over the typical 6 RPs before anything else, like 6 RPs then Depot, but I wouldn't be surprised if he went for 4 RPs, like 4 LC and 2 QP and went for Depot from there. 
and just going for a rush. I mean, he's won the first game, so he has the leeway to do this with. Aragon, on the other hand, is looking to play for the infantry rush, getting three importers. The only thing he can really do at this point, if he's not getting more RPs, is set up an, a proxy armory and just push infantry. Now, the best place to do this is right here, or, or maybe right here, because you can just go behind the base, and your opponent is basically not... They're not going to have set up defenses here. No one really thinks about this entrance. And if you take advantage of it, you can easily win the game. Now, you can't build buildings on this area here. This is a small ridge. You cannot build buildings here. It's too sloped. But you can build buildings at the base next to it, right here. So you build an armory right here and then send your units up. Now, clearly Aragon is not doing that. He is instead going... Or he was instead going north. It looks like he's actually not even going for a proxy at this point. Vermin, on the other hand, moving forward to scout. Nothing too special. He's not going for any proxies of his own from the looks of it. Though he does have a Shin Beer with him, which is always suspicious because a Shin Beer can build foundations, and the foundations can build everything. Pretty much. Though, there we go, 6 RPs and then QPRPs. So nothing too special. Looks like Vermind is not going particularly aggressive. He's going to be getting a depot after that second QPRP, as he did in the last game, but he's not treating this as a rush map. He is treating it the same way as he did Tomb of Heroes. And there goes the armory at the 2 minute mark as well. A second armory is being built up from the looks of it, or trying to be, but... Vermind is doing this a little bit late. He did have only have three RPs, he didn't build any additional RPs, he chose to build entirely importers instead. And with four importers, I would actually recommend a second armory, once he gets the money in. He actually has the money at this point. 50 LC, that's more than enough. You start building up inventory now, and since the main bottleneck is reserved, he can, Okay, he shouldn't have queued up like that. I've, I mentioned before, with CISO, you don't want to queue up, because you don't have to. Just build multiple armories. You could have, he could have afforded two armories, and it would have built faster. It's not the biggest deal right now, but in general, it's better just to have multiple production structures and build up from there. Especially if you want to upgrade, because upgrading gets in the way of construction. Now, Vermind is not so concerned. He can, unless he uses an annex for this, his depot can actually build vehicles pretty much in parallel. Not completely. There is still a limit. You can't build more than, I think, 60 or so tiles worth of vehicle. Like, we're as in tiles when you look at how much space they take up on the game grid. However, that rarely comes up. Especially not at this stage in the game. Aragon, I mean, I'm, okay, I'm kind of harping, but yeah. Aragon, if he wants to have more units faster, better to get more armories or factories than it is to get a single one and queue up. Generally speaking, when you're dealing with sequential construction in a game that has lump sum resource spending, you do not want to ever queue. If you can avoid it, don't you. Like I said, lump sum. Any continuous spending games like Total Annihilation or Zero K or Homeworld or Command and Conquer, not a big deal. Queuing is no problem. But Akron or Starcraft or I guess Dawn of War, I suppose. There are quite a few games. If you're spending your, your resources all at once as soon as you click the button to buy something, do not queue. And Akron with CISO is one of those games. Grekum and Vekir can get away with it. CISO cannot. And speaking of that, there's the foundation for the depot. Vermind has not yet started to build it. He is getting a second Zion Veer. Looks like he wants to pop it into a Zion Pulsar as quickly as possible. Has not built the depot yet. He can't actually afford it. He is apparently building up more RPs. He is focusing entirely on getting his economy going. Now getting the depot at the 426 mark. It'll be done by about the 5 minute mark. He is not going for a rush. On the other hand, Aragont is getting ground units after finishing up all of his infantry. Switched around the ordering of that so he didn't lose the production of the infantry. While Vermind is... Well, jumping back about a minute or so. And getting an... Okay, the foundations, that's when he got it before. I don't know if he's going to get an earlier depot. He really should. Like two or three Zion... Three or four Zion pulses, I mean, would deal with all these infantry, no problem. He'll see them coming, too. Because they're going to be attacking pretty soon. But... This is about 30 seconds down from where Aragon is, and this is about the time. There we go. There, There is the infantry attack. They are going forward, and the Tethbeer trying to build a comm hub is on the ridge, but can't do that from its current position. It would need to go around through Vermine's base in order to do that. And the Tethbeer knows that it looks like Aragon... Sorry, it looks like Vermine didn't quite realize that, so I have to go next to Aragon's... Sorry, I have to go through Aragon's main in order to do that. Vermine, on the other hand, has not built a depot any faster. He could, but he's not. He is going for his economy. He is not 
trying to respond with this rush quite yet. I actually think he might be able to get away with it. Given how slow infantry move, he might be able to get away with that, but I still think it'd be a better idea to build the depot as soon as he can, and then from there, get two, three or four Zion Pulsers. I know I've increased that number every time I've said it, but really, CISO infantry are actually pretty scary for Zion Pulsers to deal with. I've tried before, and you do, should not underestimate the power of CISO infantry. Their health? Yes, their health is low. Their attack power is not. Important thing to bear in mind. Anyway, Aragon, further in the future, he is going to be hitting around the 6-minute mark from the looks of it. Actually, the 6.30 mark. Which is why I said there is time. Vermine does have time. He does have one Zion Pulsar. A second Zion Pulsar is coming up. And a two more Zion Pulsars, three more Zion Pulsars are forthcoming. This defense will work out. Vermine will not lose to this rush of infantry. These Zion Pulsars will take care of it. In fact, if they move forward right now, they'd be able to take care of it very much in advance. In fact, if they do that right now, Aragon would completely lose. There'd be no chance whatsoever. And there we go. There is more than enough to defend against the infantry coming in. Aragon cannot win with his attack. It looks like he is sending a second attack to follow up, but I don't even know if this attack is going to... This attack might not even get into range before it gets torn apart by the Zion Pulsars. Oh yeah, actually, no, it is able to get into range. Some units are dealing damage, but not much. Not much at all. And... I wouldn't be surprised if Vermind were to switch around, move these units over to the edge, over to the cliff. Because he'd be able to hit down, but Aragon's forces would not be able to hit up. See, from Aragon's point of view, he cannot see up the cliff, but Vermind would be able to see down it. And it looks like Aragon is avoiding this conflict. He is changing up his actions, looks like he's trying to meet up with the other infantry forces, and building a proxy factory, probably to build Lancers from there in order to deal with the Zion Pulsars more directly. But at this point, it doesn't matter. Teth Pulsers and Shin... Sorry, Teth Pulsers and Zion Turchers are coming up just in case, just in case, some Lancers come in and try to ruin Vermine's day. So Vermine is well prepared for this. He is not going to lose out to this at all. However, he's made a bit of a risky move by moving forward right now. Let's see how it works out. We're looking at Aragon's point of view, by the way. His factory is going to be taking a lot of damage. He's jumped back very slightly. Not really changing the orders on this infantry quite yet. He's still building the proxy factory. He's still getting everything else he had already up. No real change, as far as I can tell, for economy. Aragon is still relying almost entirely... Oh, no, he's building some more RPs. He's building another RP, a QPRP, because like, like I said, he is likely going for Lancers. Two QPRPs. Yep, he's definitely going for Lancers. Though, admittedly, you still need Q Plasma for any factory units other than mechs. And when you're, not, when you're dealing with Zion Pulsers, you don't want mechs. They're, they're useless. They're only useful when you're dealing with air units. But that factory's not even able to get up. That factory won't complete before it goes down. And there it goes. The factory gone down a minute before... Moments before it was complete. Slight difference between the two, of course, but... Still, moments before it is complete, that factory goes down, and Aragon needs to retreat further from the looks of it. But no, he's not doing so. In fact, he is going to be going forward trying to protect his factory with the infantry with the lives of his infantry to get Lancers up, which, like I said, is kind of a futile effort. The Teth Pulsar is already in place. This Marine won't even be able to take damage. And at this point, the factory will complete. Whether or not they're able to build any additional units will remain to be seen, but it will complete at this point. It's not going to die before it's done. The rest of the infantry, however, will. They will die before it's done, or very close to. And it's now finished. A Lancer should be forthcoming. But Aragon is not doing so, and... Factory taking more damage, the factory will go down! There's no way of getting any units out of that factory at this point without the factory dying. There was a very, very, very small window that might have worked, but basically no. And more infantry are coming along, but I think Aragon realizes he really can't do anything at this point. He might still be trying. He's lost that factory, though. That was a lot of liquid crystal. That was 70... Well, not just 70 liquid crystal. I mean, all the infantry dying as well. That was like nine reserves and... I think a total of about 120 liquid crystal right there with all the infantry and, and the factory dying. The factory, of course, making the bulk of that, but still, a lot was lost there. Well, on the other hand, Vermine basically lost nothing. He got one of his Zion Pulsars to half health. That's it. Vermine pretty much can't lose from this position. The only thing is, his base is a little undefended, but only a little. As Shin Churches are coming in, and when they're in, that's it. There's, they're going to defend just fine. Of course, the force coming in is the bigger story, and Vermine is about to win with that too. There is nothing Aragon can do at this point. There basically is nothing, there's nothing that can really be done. I am afraid to say that, well, for Aragon's sake at least, that not much can be done here. So Aragon is going to be moving in. He's going to be finishing this off, and sorry, he's going to be trying. He's going to be losing his forces. Vermine is going to be finishing off the game. Aragon 
just has to say GG at this point. And the Shin Churcher is taking out a lot of these forces. It can't actually see. The Shin Churcher, I don't believe, can be seen by Aragon's forces. It's a little hard to tell, but I think it's... No, it's out of range. They can't see it. They can't see it over the cliff. And they basically... I think they got rid of a Veer class unit. I think that's about all they did. Maybe not even then. Now, there's a Zion Veer right here. And that Zion Veer... The Zion Veer is going to die. That Zion Veer does go down. But the Shin Churcher finishes off the rest of the infantry. And at the same time, there's Aragon's Death Force. And Aragon's Force of Death does what a Force of Death is supposed to do, which is bring death. And it is doing that very well. Admittedly, did one of the Death Pulses was lost, but not a huge loss, because really that was just, just in case there were Lancers. The rest of the actual attacking artillery forces have gone in, have destroyed everything, and Aragon throws in the towel. That is game. That is the match. That is the series. Which means that we are going to be moving on to the next series, which is Shalka versus J Raccoon. Aragon has won against Vermine two nothing. Sorry, Vermine is one against Aragon two nothing. Sorry, they kept flipping positions. So I'm having a hard time remembering who who is who. So yeah, that is game. And I'm a bit surprised that Aragon did go for infantry. That's the sort of thing I could expect someone to do. Where it attacks, where they hit in the second minute or so, if they won game one on Overgrown Citadel. Not on Cataclysm Ridge. Anyhow, next match is going to be Shalka versus J Raccoon, so I'll have that for you guys shortly. So stay tuned, and I'll be back. <laughs>